absolutely flowering. And, and the, I, I had the privilege of working on any number of important experiments that had to do with, with uh, revealing the basic structure of, of matter. And uh, we now have this thing we call the standard model. It's been in place for 30 years and is, is still in pretty good agreement with, uh, with all observations. We, we're waiting to the new accelerators that will be coming online shortly to, to, to see if we can find some anomaly that will help us move ahead to the next level. I won't be involved because I'm retired, but uh, that was my background. And I've always been interested in, in fundamental questions, and I think that by virtue of this background, I really have a good understanding of how science operates and how science can be used to, uh, to answer the basic questions about the nature of the universe. Okay, so my book is uh, God the Failed Hypothesis, How Science Shows That God Does Not Exist. And it happens to come at a very uh, opportune time for me because it's helping me uh, with sales, certainly. Uh, and that is when, when we find a, a rising interest, uh, at least in, in the United States, uh, in atheism and, and questions having to do with, with God and, and with religion. We've had a, the bestsellers that uh, we've heard about, Richard Dawkins' The God Delusion. There are two books by Sam Harris. Uh, and uh, well, this letter to a Christian nation is, is currently still on the list, the New York Times list. And he, uh, this Sam Harris is also endorsed my book, I'm happy to say. And you might ask, why, why now? Why is this uh, uh, suddenly uh, of interest? And I think the, re the reason is that there's an increasing recognition of the corrosive influence that the religious right is having uh, on America, certainly, and, and of course, as a consequence, on the rest of the world, because the U.S. has, has so much influence on what happens every place else, but so much effect on what happens every place else, the U.S. actions. And there have been a number of books that have doc documented this. There's American Theocracy by Ke Kevin Phillips, The Republican War on Science by Chris Mooney, American Fascists by Chris Hedges. This is one that's just come out. It, it is on the bestseller list. Uh, Chris Hedges is, is, is not an atheist. These books are not necessarily from an atheist perspective. Uh, but they have documented uh, uh, what, I've been, what uh, I claim is the increasing effect of, dangerous effect of, the religious right here to more Kingdom Coming. These are just out. The Kingdom Coming by Michelle Goldberg and Theo Kahn's by Damon uh, linker. So these are all books that talk about things that I don't talk about. I mean, I'm just I'm just telling you that they're appearing at the time when my book is appearing, and they're they're, they're contributing to this interest in in uh, uh, the in taking a strong role against religion. Closer. Okay. I guess I'm not a, uh, I'm a rock singer. I don't know how to stick to this thing really up close. But <laughs> Now, there's evidence for this. There's evidence, uh, as, as I said, documented in these books for, for what's going on. And, and the evidence is the theology over science that we have experienced now uh, with, the, with the Bush administration. The, it's rather amazing and hard to believe that the, much of the policy making by the Bush administration is based on, on faith rather than evidence. And this has showed up in any number of issues that I don't, I don't want to take a lot of time on this, but uh, uh, some of their resistance to doing anything about global warming, uh, stem cell research, again, because of religious reasons and not approving with the, the good conduct of, of stem cell research. The war in Iraq is kind of a faith-based uh, initiative, it certainly isn't based on evidence, was it based on evidence? Uh, Absolute only birth control. This, let me just use this as an example. And, and that is, the Bush administration has, has spent millions of dollars uh, promoting abstinence as the only uh, uh, moral uh, way to achieve birth control. And it's done this all over the U.S. and in Africa. And Africa has spent million dollar, uh, millions of dollars on just 
on just absence uh, advocacy and not a, not a cent on condoms. Uh, and and to, to make matters worse, what happened was the, when, when it was the Centers for Disease Control in the United States came out with a study that showed that abstinence was totally ineffective as a means for birth control. The Bush administration uh, tried to change the report, uh, forced them to take it off the, off the uh, uh, website, and, and so on. And uh, this, this sort of suppression of scientific results has been uh, that it, that it don't agree with this dogma uh, of the religious right has been one of the most disturbing things, and scientists finally have begun to speak out against it. The trouble is, they're not speaking out forcefully enough, and that's where Dawkins and Harris and I come in. Uh, most scientists have avoided criticizing religion. Now, I, there's those figures that I, that we just heard. Uh, lead you to, to think that, the, that this, the, there is a majority of scientists. I don't believe that. I think the polls that I've seen indicate that the majority of scientists are, are, are still not, not uh, believers. Certainly the National Academy of Science, which is the elite uh, group of scientists in the United States, there was a poll taken of them in 1998, which showed that only 7% of them believed in a personal God. So I don't think scientists are, are, are they're terribly religious in the United States, either. But they pretty much say, stay out of it. They, they, don't, they want, they want uh, the rest of us to uh, stay out of it because they're afraid, this is my surmise, that they're afraid of losing public support uh, for their research funding, and there's nothing more important to the science and the funding to a scientist. I could I, I tell you from that from 40 years of research experience, it's, it's great fun to do research. You really need money to do it, though. Uh, and then there's, of course, the whole business of, of creationism versus evolution. And uh, the scientists are, are afraid of losing the support of more moderate religious groups and also the Catholic Church uh, in, in the, uh, the battles over teaching evolution. However, there's, there's a growing minority, and I count Dawkins and Harris and myself in that minority, who, who see that there are more important problems than, than just uh, creationism versus evolution in, in the battle between science and religion. Uh, Dawkins quotes uh, in his book, he quotes geneticist Jerry Coyne as saying that the real nature of the conflict between religion and science is not evolution versus creationism, the real war is between rationalism and superstition. Now, finally, this is where I come in. God is the ultimate superstition, and I uh, am addressing the question of the existence of God. Now, the first thing I run into in this is uh, uh, arguments from, from scientists, not from theologians, interestingly enough, or theists, but from scientists, arguing that science has no role in the study of the supernatural, that it only deals with the natural. This is a long story that, again, I have to go into uh, in, in some detail in the book. But let me just give you a simple example of how science can study the supernatural and could, in principle, detect the presence of the God that most people worship, a God that, or maybe not most people worship, let's say the Catholic God, that the Catholic God could be detected. And I don't mean by the Virgin Mary appearing right here, something like that. I mean, I mean a scientific experiment that could pick this up. Suppose, oh yes, science can't study the supernatural. Suppose that there were, there were very carefully controlled experiments that followed all the proper protocols of good science, uh, and they discovered that that these were experiments on prayer. And